What's up, Tortoise Townies? It's Dan, the Tortoise Man, with TortoiseTown.com, your home for captive bred reptiles as well as reptile accessories. And today we have a wonderful guest with us, a teeny tiny little friend. This is going to be one of our hatchling three-toed box turtles. In this video, we're gonna be covering everything it takes to own your very own three-toed box turtle hatchling or well-started three-toed box turtle. These well-starteds are gonna be a little bit different from a hatchling as they're gonna have a few months on top of them, so they're going to be a little bit more well-started or a little bit more hardy, a little bit more ready to take on the rest of their life. A little background information about our three-toed box turtles. These guys are gonna be reaching sizes of about four to six inches in captivity. That's gonna be their full grown. And they are reaching ages of about 70 years old, so they're gonna be a lifelong friend. The ambient temperature for one of our three-toed box turtles is going to be about 80 to 85 degrees, and that's going to be lined up pretty well with the average household temperature, so habitating them inside is going to be really, really easy. Um, at nighttime, you can get those temperatures down to around 70 degrees. Uh, 65 is also, you know, very nice for them. They like to have a little bit of that coldness in the nighttime just to simulate a little bit of their environment better. So making sure you have a differentiation between that daytime temperature and the nighttime temperature is going to be good for helping them uh, feel like they're in their own home. These guys are going to be spending a lot of time inside of the water as hatchlings are very fragile and they're very susceptible to being picked off by predators. So in their natural habitat, in this young age, they're going to be spending a lot of time in that water, hiding, not necessarily going for the traditional basking that we see a lot of turtles going for. That's going to be a very vulnerable position for them. So we want to give them that heat, you know, that 80 to 85 degrees during the daytime. Um, but using a heat emitter as well as a dome fixture is going to allow you to localize some heat. Uh, if you're seeing that 85 degrees isn't attainable inside of your house naturally, uh, what we can do is we can use one of these. Uh, you can set it up at a distance to ensure that it's going to give a nice heat spectrum over top of it during 12 hours of the day and then allowing that to go off at night so it drops to that 70 degrees during that nighttime. It's going to be perfect for them. Because box turtle hatchlings are going to be hiding most of the day, they're going to be in that water, getting away from those predators. They don't have a lot of requirement for UV. We have here a UVB hood lamp. It's always a good idea to give them that option for a UV, so making it on one side of your setup is going to allow you to take this container right here, place it longwise across this way to ensure that they're going to have an area where they can get UVs, but they're not going to be swamped with UVs during those daytimes. So to ensure that we are simulating their natural habitat, um, making sure that they feel a little bit more safe and secure and outside of that daylight is going to actually be very beneficial for your turtle. So making sure that if you have one of these, which we recommend, you want to make sure that it's only on one end and not across the entirety, giving off a wide spectrum. Sort of like how we'd have the heat emitter giving off a localized heat. This could be a little bit more localized than a traditional setup for most other turtles. Now the three-toed box turtle is going to need humidity of 90%, which is crazy amounts of humidity. That's why we have a bit of a separate setup for the hatchlings and well-started box turtles as opposed to one of our adult box turtles. Ensuring that 90% humidity is there for our hatchlings is going to be absolutely important. Very little wiggle room there. So with this setup, we're going to ensure that they have ample water, if mostly water. So that is going to ensure that they have 90% of their day spent inside of that water, equating to making sure they have that requirement met, that super high humidity, their moisture content is going to be absolutely alleviated because of the fact that we're going to be keeping them in water. So we'll get into exactly how we're going to set that up in just one moment. Now if I can direct your attention to the elephant in the room, over here we have one of our box turtle setup kits. This is going to come with one of our box turtle setup kits. It is going to be perfect for one of our hatchlings and then it is also going to be able to be used for one of your box turtles later down the road um, for a yearling to an adult. But over here we also have one of our tortoise houses on either side. These tortoise houses are going to be great for holding a box turtle in their adult and actually can be linked up. So you can take two tortoise houses, put them together, and now you effectively have two times the space for your adult. So it's a very, very popular option, especially when it comes down to you know the longevity of your tortoise. Giving them that extra room is going to be great for their health. Um, but for the time being, for our hatchlings, for our well-started box turtles, we're going to be using this in a little bit different way. These kits are going to come with some substrate, but as I mentioned, they are going to need lots of water, if not 90% of their time spent in that water. So what we're going to do is fill up this tub with about half an inch of water. 
filling them up with about half an inch of water is going to ensure that they are going to have almost their entire shell covered. And then while the water evaporates, you're going to have to add more water in to ensure that it's going to hit the cusp of their shell and then evaporate downwards. As you see, it stopped cusping the top of their shell. You can add more water to it again. You always want to make sure that you're using distilled water to ensure that is going to be safe for your animal. Hides are super important for your turtle to ensure that they feel very safe inside of their environment. So normal hides are going to consist of cork hides, they're going to consist of half log hides. Those are all going to be organic material. Sitting those in water is not going to be great. It actually, it actually could cause them to start decomposing um, and then releasing some bad things into the water. So making sure clean water is there. We're going to be going for one of our rock dens. Rock dens are made of plastic and allows them to, you know, not necessarily break down inside of water. It'll actually survive very, very long inside of that water, way longer than any of the organic hides that we could be offering. So that's why we're going to be going for a rock den inside of this typical type of setup. One of the most important aspects of this setup is going to be something a little bit different, something that is going to be very common inside of a lot of houses, tortoise houses, a lot of setups for a lot of different reptiles. But right here we have some English ivy. This is going to be fake vines that offer a bit of aesthetic for your terrarium. But what it's going to be doing here is creating a bit of a dock aspect as well as a little bit of a brush. So in their natural habitat, these three-toed box turtles are going to be living in the shallow waters to ensure that they have some foliage, some leafage that they can hide under and around to give themselves a little bit of camouflage. As you, as you can see, their shell has a little bit of speckling to ensure that they look a little bit more like the bottom of a, of a lake, bottom of a pond. So this is going to be um, you know, very, very important, this, this vines for allowing them to have that dock. Um, so when they don't want to be in that water, they can hide right up against it, climb up one of these leaves that's going to be sitting directly inside of the water, and then that is going to effectively allow them to get out of that water, get a little bit dry, uh, and have that time on land, that about 10% time on land. That's also going to give them a little bit of a brush, so if they see you coming, they get a little scared, they can run underneath those leaves faster than they can get to one of their hides, so it is going to make them feel very secure as well. Uh, these are going to be great options. Make sure you keep them clean because it can get a little bit dirty if you are not changing your water very often. So ensuring that each individual leaf is clean is going to be as important to ensuring your water is clean. Keeping track of your temperature is going to be super duper easy with one of our temperature or thermometers. So there's a couple of options here. This is going to be the best. Uh, this is going to be a digital thermometer and this is going to give you a real accurate representation of the um, of the temperature inside as well as it's going to allow you to control it um, so if you're seeing that your heat emitter is going a little haywire it's going way too extra giving you way too much heat and you don't want to necessarily pull it back any farther um, you can use this to test the temperature of the water um, that the heat is going to be closest to that way you can judge whether the heat is going to be affecting the water to the way that you like it and then allow that to be dumbed down a little bit to ensure that you're not going to be blasting it but also keeping up that heat and not to get that 80 to 85. That's about all the things that you're going to need to keep a hatchling or one of our well-started three-toed box turtles very, very, very happy inside of their new home. Uh, that's going to be keeping them for about six months for a well start or about one full year for one of our hatchlings just to ensure that they're going to be getting that hydration. The biggest cause for any type of disease for any type of illness inside of a box turtle is actually going to be because they're not getting enough water. So ensuring that at their most fragile state, their youngest age, that they have more than ample water at their disposal is going to keep them happy and healthy. To ensure a smooth transition of feeding between tortoisetown.com to your very home, we actually do acquaint them at a very, very young age with pellets. Pellets are going to be absolutely perfect for your hatchling as hatchling diet pellets are going to give them the nutrients that they need. The hatchling pellets are super, super important because the adult or the traditional pellets are going to be a little bit too big, a little bit too rough for them. Their beaks can't break through it. Um, it's going to be a very, very rough time for them. So ensuring that the hatchling diet is the one that you have is going to be perfect. These guys are also going to need some good old protein. So we can actually feed them some chopped up earthworms or even some crickets. Small crickets for hatchlings work best and specifically if you pick the legs off the back of them, it can't get away from them. So it creates hunting um, a little bit of a, um, of, a, of a leg up, you know, a little underdog for that hunting aspect of your box turtle's life. So do them a favor and make sure you pick those legs off so they're not gonna get away from them. Thank you so much for watching Tortoise Townies. I can't appreciate you enough. If you guys like the video or if you learned anything about our three-toed box turtle friends, Hit that like button. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button as well as ring that bell icon to stay updated on everything tortoisetown.com. 
So this is Dan the Tortoise Man, and this is, again, our three-toed boxer hatchling signing off. And we'll catch you again next time at tortoisetown.com.